creating online multiplayer games can be suspiciously easy if you're using the right tools. So I decided to write my own for one of my current projects, PixCarts. I can have 100 player lobbies and write netcode for a car in less than 10 lines. I started dabbling in multiplayer game development in 2017, then in 2018, last year, and again this year. I wasn't and I'm still not aware of any great Python networking frameworks for games out there, so I started with the basics. In the world of real-time networking, the basics start with socket programming. Python has the built-in sockets library for this, and you can write most kinds of networked applications with it. Although it's often not the most convenient tool for the job, I prefer to work with TCP connections, which means I tell the client to connect to a host and I send arbitrary messages encoded in raw bytes back and forth. Everything else has to be built up from scratch. Every time I've worked on a networked project, I've improved my levels of abstraction to make networking easier. Traditionally, you would pack in your data types and create your own message types with their own interpreters so you could have well-compressed packets. This theoretically allows you to send more messages and to sometimes receive them faster, but this sounded a bit too tedious to do. On my first few projects, I just encoded string messages with text coordinates and other information separated by a delimiter, essentially messaging in CSV. Then I took some inspiration from web development and started sending my messages as strings containing JSON data so I could read it as a Python dictionary with all the values properly typed without much effort. This was very convenient, but also quite slow. I was also using a single connection with a request response procedure, which is also an idea from web development. This year, I got my regular urge to make Mario Kart Wii. <laughs> I've spent a lot of time in the game over the years, and I had been playing with the idea since 2017, but this year I finally took it past the prototype. I knew my JSON networking setup wasn't sufficient for real-time racing since I saw ping inflated by 50 to 100 milliseconds, throughput bottlenecked, and a variety of other issues. With that in mind, I decided to test out some ideas for a new networking framework. I had some work experience with HLA, a networking framework developed in the 90s, which is used for simulations rather than games. However, there's an incredibly large overlap between simulations and games, so there were some ideas there that I thought were interesting. I'm sure this isn't unique to HLA, but I thought that the idea of shared predefined objects was interesting. Normally when possible, I like to lean towards some characteristics of stateless programming, where something like a UI element will be rendered and interacted with while not having its own object or memory, instead deriving its current state from other elements. This is oftentimes more convenient to work with in game development since it requires less code. That said, I felt that the idea of shared objects for networking instead of an update message oriented approach had tons of potential benefits. Intuitively, you could have a player object that's automatically networked with arbitrary properties. It'd be extremely easy to work with if you could just update the health or position property and have it synchronized with all of the clients. If you want to send a traditional message, you could just create a new shared message object that all the clients could see. Of course, it doesn't quite work that perfectly. For example, there need to be server-side controls for which clients can see which updates and the ability for the server to block certain updates to prevent cheating. With these concepts in mind, I set out on the adventure of creating my own networking framework. The first hurdle was to overcome the performance barriers from my previous solutions to a degree that would be acceptable for multiplayer racing. The object system didn't inherently do anything to solve this issue, but since it was a common abstraction for everything, I could reduce the actual packet sizes by encoding the updates as bytes. There are only a few necessary message types like create, update, or delete, so this was quite easy. Additionally, since communication was done through object updates instead of a request response format, updates could be streamed in both directions. The request response format can be abstracted through objects if you want to emulate it, but for regular things like position updates, which is critical in racing games, streaming the data as soon as it's available rather than waiting for it to be requested is much faster. To implement this two-way connection, I actually just used two connections on different ports, one for each direction. 
Here's an early test with the server I ran about 500 miles away. The updates appear almost instant. When benchmarked, the networking overhead, that is the difference between the apparent latency in the game and the base ping to the server, was 4 to 8 milliseconds including TCP, the Nginx proxy server, and my actual networking framework. That's borderline negligible, so my performance issues were solved. That's not all though. There are two important stats for networking. As mentioned, the first is latency, but the second is throughput. Testing the throughput for object updates gave some impressive results. The framework was able to handle 250,000 networked object updates in one second. There was just one more core feature I needed to make for my racing game. When networked objects move, normally it's best to periodically send data and make the clients interpolate the data to make it look smooth. So I added a custom data type for object attributes that would automatically buffer and interpolate its data. This significantly reduces the amount of updates required at the small cost of a minor apparent latency increase. Making an interpolated attribute like a position is as simple as just using the interpolated type rather than a normal float. This was my first test with interpolated object positions and the beginning of a functional car with my PC being the clients and my remote server being the host. The success here quickly led to making a functional networked racing prototype. This video is more about networking than game development, so now we can skip over to the present where PixCarts is actually a playable game that has gone through multiple playtests in my Discord server. Right now, I'm working towards a hopefully final playtest here on YouTube during a live stream by adding lots of polish and content to the game. I have to say this might be the most personally fun game dev project that I've worked on. I even set it up so I can play with my Joy-Con controller. During some of the updates to PixCarts, I did some game-specific benchmarks. I was able to run 24 clients on my PC while keeping my $10 server below 30% CPU usage, which is quite a good sign. A cheap server can already handle 50 players in one lobby, although my PC can't run that many clients. With mine optimizations, it could handle a 100 player lobby or 200 concurrent players split into 12 player lobbies. I actually rent multiple servers, so scaling is easy. With my current servers, I could probably handle about 400 concurrent players. I could also handle 2,000 concurrent players in 12 player lobbies on less than $100 a month. These results make it quite clear that my networking framework is surprisingly cost effective for being written in Python. So how easy is the framework to use? Well, the base car example used less than 10 lines of netcode. As mentioned before, the networked objects are predefined. So first you have to define all of the objects and their types like this. This 144 line file defines all of the networking specifications for PixCarts in its current state. Then these objects will automatically populate in the framework's object collections as they're created. There are creation, deletion, and update hooks as well in case you want other functionality to trigger upon changes, but most of the time it's as simple as just updating the value in the networked object. Now you may have two questions. The first being, is the framework open source and available for use? For now, it isn't. There are many parts I designed as I went without much planning, since I was working on the framework sporadically in between and during lectures, so some things don't work quite the way I would like them to. PixCarts has had quite a few issues and scuffed implementations because of the stranger parts of the networking framework. My plan is to focus on PixCarts for now and get more experience for what ideal usage would look like. Hopefully within a year or two, I'll start working on a new version of the framework that's much more user-friendly and better in a variety of ways, at which point I'll open source it for everyone to use under an MIT license. The second question you may have is when you can play PixCards. As mentioned before, I'm hoping to have a playtest in a livestream here on YouTube, and I'd like to do it this year, so you can subscribe and keep an eye out for the scheduling of that livestream. While I'm leaning towards taking PixCards all the way to release, I'm not fully committed yet, and I'll decide after the next playtest. If it does have a full release, I'd be aiming for a release sometime next year with around 16 tracks in the game. Anyways, I hope you found this video informative, and I'll see you in the next one.